Hello again. Christina Forbes, wife of seriously injured worker Lauren Forbes. This is a continuation to uh, part one of Dr. Gershman's report. So I'm just going to take uh, start off right where I left off. So I started off with uh, Dr. Van Sitter had noted that his right uh, elbow was functional, but potentially a diagnosis, interotitical cortisone injection could be done, if, and if he responded favorably, then the possible um, orthoscopic exploration removal of the radial head screw plus release of adhesions would be practical if done orthoscopically. Social history. Mr. Forbes is married. His children are 6, 9, and 10. His wife is a homemaker. He likes to walk his dogs. He says he has 44 acres. He says tink he likes tinkering with cars. He plays with his kids. He likes gardening. He says he is handy on the computer. He says he has two years of graphic design course and a year of computer animation course. He says he is self-taught. He says he would like to go to Vancouver Film School, but it is a pipe dream as he cannot afford it. Personal history, medical. He says he has no lower back pain or pain in his lower legs. There may be a past history of substance abuse, judging from notes. Surgical, he had a cartilage tear on one of his knees, which is resolved. Allergies, dogs, cats, morphine makes him, causes a rash. He says he has um, a reaction to wasps, bees, but doesn't carry a kit because he cannot afford it. Alcohol, none. Smoking, one to three packs a day. Medications, he's currently only taking two Percocets a day. Physical examination, I love this one. He is five foot nine-ish. Yeah, just a second. There's there's quali there's qualified medical fucking shit right there. He is nine, five foot nine-ish. <laughs> He has put on 30 pounds of weight, according to him, over the past year. He said he used to be 245 pounds and ripped. Now he looks obese. <laughs> he is fairly dramatic in his pain description. He is guards and withdraws. With distraction, his exam is a little bit easier. He was very frustrated being here today. His surgical scars over the right elbow and left wrist are healed well. He tended to sit with his right arm across his lap with a jacket over his left forearm and was hesitant presenting his right hand for a handshake. Oh, he has, oh good lord. The guy can't move his elbow like that to extend for a fucking handshake. Range of motion of both shoulders was normal. He demonstrated some grimacing with a possible painful arc in the right shoulder. No other specific impingement findings uh, noted. He had an approximately 20 degree flexation uh, contract of the right elbow. Almost full flexation and supination was approximately 20 degrees from neutral and pronation was almost full. He has a functional range of motion in the right elbow and he has some decreased um, in right and left wrist flexation. He had full range of motion of his left elbow. There was no evidence of allodynia when distracted. There was no evidence of temperature asymmetry or skin color changes in either arm. There was no um, asymmetry. I did not note any edema in his forearms or fingers. There was no joint, sniff joint stiffness other than his wrists and right elbow, which is accounted for by his fracture pathology. Both palms sweat equally. The decreased range of motion in his right elbow and wrist are related to his fracture pathology and not CRPS stiffness, in my opinion. He demonstrated weakness in all muscle groups tested in both forearms, but I felt this was volatile. There were no hair changes or skin changes. He had vertical lines through all of his nails on both hands, but it did not look pathological to me. Tender right scuff box to light palpitation. I'm not too sure what the heck that. Impression and plan. Mr. Forbes is approximately nine months post-injury. He presents with the following. One, post-radial neck fracture, open reduction, internal fixation with ongoing right elbow pain and a slight fixation, supination, pronation limitation. A right scaphoid fracture with ongoing wrist pain. Uh, post left community distal radial fracture with ongoing pain in the area. Bilateral global arm to fingertip pain including back and neck pain reported. Five, I would call all of the above idiopathetic pain. Now I've looked into idiopathetic pain. Dr. Hirschman, you're a retard. Um, in my opinion, he has a heightened pain and disability perception, not necessarily an intent to magnify his symptoms, which is consistent with his psychosymmetrically documented personality testing. 
Number seven, he might have a narcotic inhibition. I do not believe he presents the current evidence-based group for criteria for complex regional pain syndrome. One, this is hilarious. You're going to laugh. If anyone out there has CRPS, you're going to bust a gut. Okay, I do not believe he meets the current evidence-based practice or group uh, criteria for complex regional pain syndrome. One, he does have continuing pain, which is disappointment to any indicating event. Two, he does report hyperthesia. I'm not clear that he is reporting any temperature asymmetry or skin color um, changes. Three, he does report demia in the forearms. Four, he does report some report some joint stiffness related to his fracture site. Five, he does report bilateral palm sweating. Six, he does report decreased range of motion in his right elbow and left wrist. Seven, he does report tremor or weakness secondary to his pain and feeling dis deconditioned. And eight, he does report changes in his nail. Objectively, I did not he does not have evidence of allodynia. I did not attempt the pinprick testing as there was no evidence of allodynia when distracted and the pinprick would have simply drawn obvious attention to his pain. I noted no evidence of any temperature asymmetry or skin color changes and I noted no evidence of objective abdenia or swelling asymmetrically. There was bilateral and palmar sweating, which could easily be explained by normal pathology. Both arms were sweating as well. He did note, I did note decreased range of motion in his right elbow and both wrists, but this is accounted for by the fracture pathology and I did not feel there was any specific tropic changes and his motor weakness was related to his pain in my opinion. <coughs> um, it, it, if it has not been done, it may be worthwhile to make sure that the right scaphoid fractured is healed. I am sure this has been taken care of, but I cannot judge from the notes. CT scan has been indicated in, and it is unlikely an, an interarticular injection of his right elbow will relieve his pain, and it is unlikely hardware removal will solve his problems, in my opinion. I explained that I do not think he had typical CRPS, but I did acknowledge that he has ongoing pain, which is not accounted for by his fractures. I acknowledge his frustration. I do not feel that the, stali the stellite ganglion blocks um, are going to be beneficial in this situation. Perhaps a pain program would be helpful if he is able to come to some terms with his anger over the whole situation. Hopefully he can return to drywalling as this is likely in his best interest. Sincerely, Dr. Gershman, MD. So, wow. That report is a fucking joke, and that's exactly what came out of Dr. Scruton's mouth when she read it. This is a joke. Considering that this, okay, so Dr. Scruton had seen his report and had, um, was aware of it June 23rd, 2006. So there's, oh, sorry, pardon me, June 23rd, 2006. Dr. Gershman did not fax his uh, report to um, to WorkSafe BC until July 13th, 2006. So that's um, quite a bit of time afterwards that he had actually filled out his report. Um, what I've got here is um, some stuff that um, our lawyer had worked on for WCAT and unfortunately uh, Lauren lost that due to Dr. Gershman's report. But I would like to, to point out um, that... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So I'll just give it a second here. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we are. This is this is interesting. Okay, so I've only got a couple more minutes. I'm going to pipe it out real quick. Okay, so as it relates to the report of Dr. Gershman, that report is one that I have been able to locate in any of my disclosure material, and as noted on the start of the file is information that appears to be missing from disclosure. As a result, I am not in a position to respond directly to the facts contained in that report, but I do disclose the physician's progress report by submitted by Dr. For or Dr. Scruton, Mr. Forbes' family doctor, who reviewed the for report and met with Mr. Forbes. The report, the report was sent in an electronic Form 11 to the Workers' Compensation Board and appears to have been received on August 22, 2006. The report indicates that his personal physician found errors in Dr. Gershman's report in the form of statements